Greetings, fellow mathematicians. This is our first example of an integral that we can evaluate using a partial fraction decomposition. So let's get started. Since our denominator isn't factored, let's first fully factor it. And this one should be pretty easy. We're going to look for numbers that multiply to positive 21 and add to negative 10. I think that should factor as x minus 3 times x minus 7. All right, from here, we can rewrite our function. And then make use of the factors to do the partial fraction decomposition. So replace your denominator with the factorization. And we complete the partial fraction decomposition by noticing the types of factors that we have. This is the simplest and first case for partial fraction decomposition, where we have two different or distinct linear factors. Now for linear factors, the partial fractions that we get look like a constant divided by the linear factor. So here, for our first factor, we'll get a partial fraction a divided by x minus 3. And then for our next linear factor, we get another constant, we'll say b, over the linear factor, which is x minus 7 here. Now, our goal is to solve for the numerical values of a and b. We don't want to do that in this form since that equation involves fractions. Well, we're going to eliminate fractions by multiplying both sides by the LCD. Now, the equation that we're going to start with, we don't need the original version of the function with the unfactored denominator. We're going to take this version and multiply both sides by the LCD. So, for this, we'll multiply the whole equation, left and right side, by x minus 3 times x minus 7. And notice when I multiply that to the left side, all the factors cancel completely, leaving me with the numerator 1. And when I multiply that LCD to the fraction involving a, now it's the x minus 3 factors that cancel, leaving you the x minus 7 factor. So we'll get a times x minus 7. And now this LCD multiplying the b term, it's the x minus 7 terms that cancel, leaving you with x minus 3. So we'll get b times x minus 3. From here, now that we have no fractions, this should be easier to solve for the values of a and b. We're going to use a method that I call plugging in. In other words, we're going to plug in well-chosen values for x that will make some of the factors become 0. So if we take a look at the first factor, x minus 7, we might get 0 by plugging in x equal to 7. And then to make the x minus 3 factor become 0, we can plug in x equal to 3. Now technically, you can plug in any two values for x that you want, but 7 and 3, those are the two values of x that make the individual linear factors become 0. So again, always choose well-chosen values that make those factors become 0. Now this equation has no x's on the left side. Some other examples there might be. So you would plug your values of x in on both sides, but here our left side is just 1, 
if we plug in x equal to 7, the equation that we get, the left side is 1. With x is 7, the a term drops out. And when x is 7, this term, we get 4b. And that is a very simple equation that we can solve for b. Just divide by 4, and we should get b as 1 fourth. To get the value of a, we're just going to plug in the other value of x that we chose. So now we're going to plug in x equal to 3 everywhere. The left side is still 1. But now when x is 3, the a term remains. But 3 minus 7, we get a factor of negative 4 times a. And now it's the b term that evaluates to 0. That's gone. Again, this is very simple to solve for a. Just divide by negative 4. So it looks like we get the value for a as negative 1 fourth. Now this is most of your work in a partial fraction decomposition, solving for the values of your constants. Here we have two, a and b. In other examples, you might have more, maybe a, b, c, and d, or beyond. But this is most of the work for our question. We just need to plug in our values of a and b to our partial fraction decomposition. So we found the value of a as negative 1 fourth. And the value of b as positive 1 fourth. All right, now we took our function, factor the denominator, and then we rewrote it in a form that is much easier to integrate. Both these terms will evaluate to natural logs. Let's put this all together. So we take our original function in the integral and we rewrite it as several partial fractions. Notice I'm taking the fractions a and b, negative one-fourth and positive one-fourth. Instead of leaving them in the numerator, I'm going to pull them out front just to make it look a little nicer. The other term we get is a positive one-fourth times 1 over x minus 7. And each of these terms integrates to a natural log. So let's just write down our antiderivative. We have a negative one-fourth natural log of x minus 3. And then added to that, we get a one-fourth but natural log of x minus 7. And that completes our evaluation of this integral with a partial fraction decomposition. If you're on top of your four important integrals from our previous video, this example should have been perfectly fine once you get up to here. Most of your work, again, occurs here in solving for the values of a and b or however many constants you have. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, support the channel by liking and subscribing.